salutations, <laughs> Patreon and YouTube family. Um, this actually is going to go on YouTube. And I was requested to do a part two of a video that I did um, actually over a year ago that I only re recently released to YouTube called Spirit Release. And I'm going to turn this one Spirit Depossession, I believe, because that's actually accurate to what's going on. And something that I want to really make clear before we even get started here is that when I'm talking about this and these type of quote-unquote attachments or possessions, it is at the level of people like you and I, the earthbound spirits, humans like you and I that don't cross over for various reasons. And we'll go into that more. We went into that last video also, but we'll even tag on that a little bit more. And this is going to be based on the fact that I know even more than I did then, a lot more. And I've crossed over uh, several more individuals, a lot more with different clients now. So I know more and something I'm seeing as a commonality amongst the different cases. So we'll kind of discuss that a little bit and bring that to light. I think that's really important. And I think it speaks more as data as opposed to the stuff we're just hearing from other people. We're just, you know, that... A lot of people that can't do what they say they can do. They can't see like they think they can see. And there's this whole other thing going on. So they want to focus completely on demonic. And that does exist. Don't get me wrong. No doubt about it. And my sympathy is to those that are dealing with dem demonic forces and things. But right now, we're talking about the earthbound spirit level. The people level. And this, as in so many things on this planet, is in layers. It's a darkness that's in layers. And this layer has to be removed the reason why some people don't cross over here. And that's work that a lot of us is doing that is vital. We talk about a change in consciousness on this planet. That's one. <laughs> Boom! Anyway, <clears throat> um, going from that into something that I'm starting to notice is that I noticed very quickly is that it says something about our power, our field of, of energy and thought forms as what we can do as far as running from the light. Let me tell you, at the point of death and when we're starting to cross over, running from the light, I've heard a lot of individuals say that and give that advice. Man, that is bad advice. You hear me? That is bad advice. That can wind up getting you stuck as an earthbound spirit very easily. And when I'm seeing that, when I'm seeing more and more, uh, I mentioned it before, as a medium, I became, it shocked me when dealing with these um, earthbound spirits is that I couldn't see them on the outside of the energy field like I do most of them. Okay, and getting information that way from them and detecting them in that way. These were entwined in the negative behavior patterns of the client, of the person. So they're not nearly as aware until the person is in heightened awareness and then they can come out and things like that. But it's a, it's a whole other thing going on. But the reasons why some of them are getting trapped here um, it's, it's, it's very for various reasons. One will be they run from the light because they feel the light might be their judgment or they're going to have to change or they're worried going about hell, going to hell. And, you know, it says something. I don't know how long the period is that the light stays for them and you get a chance to say goodbye and do your earthly things and wrap that up and then go ahead and cross over. I don't know what the time frame of that is. But it's very interesting because I think it says something that I've not, enough of these earthbound spirits have described to me running away from the light or trying to push it away or going and hiding from it, and then it kind of goes away. All right? But then they're in darkness, a lot of darkness, until they see light, a light on people. And then they start living through people in these behavior patterns. For example, one that I want to bring up definitely, a place that I've seen people getting joined with these earthbound spirits. Earthbound spirits, the population of them, as is numerous, the living, the dead earthbound population here is as numerous as the living. That I promise you. It, I mean, it, it, it's really crazy down here. And one way that they, one way they start joining from people, you can get joined a lot of places, especially the amount of people here that are mediums and psychics and unaware of it, just walking around trying to pay their bills. But one place that they're gathering in several of these Earthbound spirits have told me where they join with these people were in hospitals. Not just hospitals, but incubator rooms. All right? That's a big one. That they're joining with people in incubator rooms. And it's been described to me, some have said that they see a light coming there. 
several lights and they go join with one of the light because they think it's a chance for them to reincarnate. That's one chance, that's one thing there. And the babies in the incubator room, they don't have a fully formed energetic field yet. They just arrived, which I think arriving in this density is somewhat shocking to a degree. That's why babies scream, I think, the first thing. They open up their eyes, they see the density, and they say, Oh my God! That's probably somewhat shocking, so they scream. <laughs> but anyway, their energy fields are not fully formed by their incubator room, and it says something about our death, our, our, our birth process, our death, our birth processes. We need to also practice on protecting our children energetically, lacing them with the energetic shield, just like we do ourselves. But that's something that most people aren't taught, so their babies aren't protected in that way. And then you've got a child that will be will be joined by this earthbound spirit in the incubator room, and they'll grow up with this earthbound spirit with them all their life feeling like it's them through these behavior patterns. You know, this could even be leading to gender disassociation in some cases. You have a female that joys with a male baby, and he's, it's always been there. So that get, takes us into an all, no, all new realm, psychology-wise, that I'm not even going to touch on, all right? But nonetheless, this is something that happens a lot. And <clears throat> I think um, when thinking of this and dealing with this as well, as just how these personalities influence negatively the person's life, right? That's, that's it, it, it's a big deal, and sometimes this goes beyond this life, it goes to other lifetimes. I've crossed over a couple of spirits that were obsessed with somebody from this incarnation saying they look like they did last incarn our incarnation. They're still here while this person is incarnated, they're still in disembodied, they're you know, earthbound, this other part of the person is reincarnated, and they're talking about obsession about them still, and how these traumas from a past life carry into these lives. That's another problem, because we don't even believe in past lives. All right? So I'm just going to go on through what I did. Is I didn't want to get too excited on this, because there's so much I want to cover. I'm gonna go, I've actually created lists this time. I'm going to go through it a little bit to make sure we address some of these things that are very, very prevalent. And they go with the pictures you saw at the beginning. I show the pictures at the end also so that they will make more sense after I've done the talk during the video. And also my email is at the end of every video for you that ask a lot. If you watch the end of the video to the end, you'll see my email on there. Anyway, um, <clears throat> all right. Um, the other thing that keeps people um, earthbound also is being the desire for the sadness and not to leave. Sometimes we can be so sad over somebody departing, somebody passing, that it will actually hold them here and keep them here. And they'll wind up joining with that person and then that person starts acting like whoever this is, a parent or a brother or sister that passed on, all of a sudden they start taking on their, their mannerisms and things of that nature. So that's one thing we have to be prepared to actually help our loved ones to cross over and to go into the light and to make that change, all right? So that's one thing there. Um, so be careful as far, just be aware of that, that our own sadness can keep someone here. Um, also, the more love, um, the more love that a person seems to contain and be able to generate also affects how they reincarnate on the other side. All right, so that could be like, how much God love do you feel? How much love do you generate? That affects where you manifest as far as Bardo goes, mansion worlds, on the next reincarnation. So that's got a lot to do with it. So that's something else I want to influence there also, because some of these beings will not be able to see the other beings in the room that are angelic until they embrace more love and actually release and experience some of that trauma and release that left off at saying that actually the more love that the spirit, the earthbound spirit feels, the more they become aware of other beings that are in the room that are present, beings that I might perceive, you might perceive, you know what I mean? But they start actually becoming more aware of it themselves, the earthbound spirits do. And it's something about the love and the brightness of the souls that become aware and the angelics and the portals that become aware to them at that point. So it says a lot about what love really is and how love and love of the Creator and ourselves and everything really affects 
the way we reincarnate, the re way we reassemble on the other side, and the way our death process goes. So that's a lot to be said about that, all right? Um, something else there is that I want to say again, past traumas, people not accept, not facing their past trauma, not acknowledging them, trying to work through them, not just this lifetime from this life experiences, but from other life lifetimes, past lives, whether it be on this planet, on other planets, whatever, but they travel with us. They're in the soul matrix, all right? And those are things that can keep us earthbound. They can keep us from going into the light and those things when actually our death process happens and we go into that shock state at first before the light comes and the things that, you know, we do before this transition happens. So something else to be, a fair, uh, to be aware of, all right? And to exercise forgiveness of ourselves and on others, you know, it's a no joke type of a deal. Uh, You know, I think that's, that's most of what I wanted to say concerning this, actually. So it's the ways, and we talked about before, the ways that people get earthbound also, which is being um, too attached to property. I've seen addiction being a big one, all right? And addiction saying that, uh, you know, they want to have another drink. And, it, and so what they start doing, they want to go party. So what they start doing is living through other people and increasing their desire to actually have drinks and party and stuff and this this individual starts partying way harder than they were and it starts destroying their life and affecting their life while some of these spirits will stay with that earthbound spirit will stay with that person or it'll jump to another person and get them to party because they're getting that feeling of partying again but it's just like an addiction here it doesn't last long and it starts fading more as time goes on and some of these earthbound spirits start telling me then they start influencing the people to do bad things you know, to hate other people, to hurt people, fight, things of that nature. You know, so it says a lot about what happens as far as what we do in our earthbound or we're physical as opposed to we're not physical. And some of these things that keep us bound here, you know, like I said, family's another one that they're staying here. They don't want to leave someone. And something else I want to throw in there definitely is that a lot of times these earthbound spirits will come to someone, whether it's a baby that's in the incubator room that is sick or a person that's sick and in the hospital. A lot of people get attachments and get joined at the hospital. And a lot of time it's this earthbound spirit is trying to help the person. They see something wrong with the energy field, they're already in darkness, but they're trying to help the person. And the person accepts this help. And sometimes it does help, whether it's placebo or whatever the case is. And in that way they start welcoming this other earthbound spirit within them all the time because of this healing factor that occurred with it. But the truth is, that's an attachment. It stops them from going on, and it changes the life of the person that's attached as well. So that's just more things to bring out there, right? And I hope I'm getting this because this is very real, and it disturbs me that I hear a lot of people that call themselves medium, and they're talking plenty about reptilians and all these attachments of this and that and these different things, but they're not talking about the earthbound spirits. And that's the first level we have to deal with here. It's a real problem that a lot of people don't cross over. And it's a problem that is indicative to this spear. Spear. <laughs> anyway, so that's something I wanted to bring up. Uh, please push the subscribe button. Please push the like button. Hit that bell again. I wish I could do that deal where I pulled up the bell right here and somebody could just point there. But anyway, hit the bell, even if you're already subscribed, because there's that shadow band still going on with my channel. Um, I'm going to go over these notes again real quick, make sure I got everything, but this is about as long as I want it to go because this leads into others just um, doing your own research, trying to help yourself if you know someone hasn't crossed over, just trying to help. And it's, you know, it's, um, it's very serious is all I can say. Um, yeah, that's all I'll say. I think I'll leave it there. Please subscribe. Thank you to the people on Patreon. It's because of you this video is still going, or this, uh, this YouTube thing is still even going. So there's a lot more videos over there. It's the people there that have really kept this going, and that's how this is being made. So thank you, and I appreciate all the people that are communicating with each other on the channel. I try to respond occasionally, all right, but uh, keep talking amongst each other, and I appreciate the positive comments, and keep it real. Peace. Mm -hmm.